Hi everyone. Today for the quick tips I'm going to be talking about something which I had never heard of at all. Totally new to me but uh, I should have known about it <coughs> because it's been around for a long time and that is stone paper. I was sent a book, a nice, um, you know, notebook, sketchbook, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's even got my name printed on the front, which is very nice. And it's got, you know, the requisite elastic thingy that's it. And it's from a company called Etched, not Etcher, who also make books with white covers, but Etched. And um, the paper that's in this, they informed me, is made from stone. So, of course, I had to do some investigations into that. So I've got some notes here and I'm going to talk about the things that are interesting about it and how you can use it. So the first thing I did was some scribbles like this and discovered that felt tip pens work on it, pencil works on it, and it's really quite nice to use. So you just pick up an ordinary pencil and you can write. And it's a lovely smooth um, line that it makes. Paper feels like real paper at the first touch. It feels like sort of magazine paper. Um, quite uh, thick-ish, quite smooth-ish. Um, but the funny thing about it is you can't tear it. It doesn't, it bends, <laughs> but it doesn't tear. I think if I tried really, no, Really, ah, oh, there we go. You can if you really, really try, and then it tears like plastic. And that is because it's made of a combination of 80 to 90 percent cal calcium carbonate, which is rock, ground very fine, mixed with polyethylene, a kind of um, plastic, which they call resin, but it's plastic. And um, so it gives you a very strange feel. So I thought, first of all, does it take watercolour? And I painted this. This was my sketch for the mushroom forest that we did just a little while ago. And I found that it was really quite difficult to get the paint to stick. Um, but if you sort of rubbed it in a bit, it would finally stick. Um, but it sort of seemed to me that that was not entirely, um, what's the word, uh, suitable or uh, practical or acceptable. So put it aside for a little while, had to think about it. The next thing I did with it, I took some pages out. I'm good at dismantling books. And I painted these baubles, Christmas baubles, in reds and golds and things. And then I used um, one of these um, ink pens here, these uh, Uniball Signo pens, to put these decorations on. And I thought, well, that looks quite fun. So I did a few of those. And it's a, it's a look. You might like that look, you might not. I did it with different things. This one, these were Kuretake paints. This was also Kuretake, but the graphite colours, and they are also interesting, but we're really just trying out the possibilities here. These ones, um, this was the graphite colour as well, but that was just the, the green one, I think. So, so there's those. And um, then yesterday I thought, oh, come on, get a grip. We're going to need to do something serious here. So I tried out a potted plant and trying to um, see if I could get some interesting effects on the leaves and everything. And um, yeah, so today I looked it all up and I've got some information for you if you should be interested to try this out. And I'm going to go through that now. Um, I think that it's nice, <coughs> excuse me, to use... <coughs> If you can make it work because the white of the paper really shines through so everything looks i did the same painting on ordinary paper and it's nowhere near as bright that is not enhanced that is the way it is it's really bright so if you're looking for a woomph effect <coughs> maybe you're going to digitize it use it on um online or something and I really think there's something to be said for that. Lots of people make this paper, not just etched. Well, actually, when I say make this paper, I don't mean that. I mean, lots of people make books of it. It seems to be mostly manufactured in Taiwan, where it was invented in 1998 by a company called Lung Men, Lung Men Tech Co. Um, so it's been around for 20 odd years, 24 years, actually. 
And then there are loads of companies making it, including Cast, K-A-R-S-T in Australia. And then we've got these companies here. I think some of these are American. I expect you would find them easily online if you were interested. Ogami, I think, is one of the most popular ones. And Repap, which is an unfortunate name, if you ask me. Um, that's right. So I thought, now I'm going to try it out. And so this is a graphite pencil. This is what you get with a graphite pencil. And I was just trying out the flat side to get lovely, really, it feels really nice. There is something to be said for this. It's a, an interesting experience. And if you are into self-expression and anything like that, and you want to just discover something new, I heartily suggest that you get some of this paper. It's not any more expensive than anything else. But just don't expect it to last your lifetime because it's not um, archival. They don't make any claims for its arch ar archival um, <clears throat> properties. It probably will degrade if the sun gets on it. So it'll be fine to do a picture and uh, di uh, digitize it, put it on the computer, it's there forever. But if you frame it and put it on the wall in direct sun, the same as everything else actually, it will, it will fade and eventually the plastic in this will, like all good bottles, biodegradable ones, um, it will uh, sort of lose its will to live, so to speak. So, so yeah, graphite works really well. So anyone who likes to sketch, you know, um, go for it. This is ink pen. This is a Stettler pigment liner. This is a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that's very fine. And that works too. So I think we'll probably look for a slightly um, thicker one. This is a 0 0.3. This is a micron and that works too. No problem. One thing you have to be careful of if you're doing some drawing uh, in a book like this, don't press too hard or better still, put another piece of paper or something underneath where you're working. The reason being, it's very, very um, prone to indentation. So if you do this and you press quite hard, you'll find you get the lines coming through on the other side. So that could spoil your painting. So Stettler pigment liners, microns, they work perfectly. Graphite works perfectly. <coughs> now on this page, I did some tests. And um, what we've got here is, this is a water brush. This is one of these Poetique brushes. And I literally, can't show you with the wrong color. I literally um, just worked onto the paper like this. And it goes on absolutely fine. So that was quite effective. We can uh, come in afterwards and add to it, you know. You're not finished until you're done. And uh, so that's good. That worked fine. No problem at all with the water brush, poetique type. This is the Ink Tense pencils. <coughs> I was surprised actually how well this went on. And I'll show you what I did. I just did, you know, the I have my five year old hat on again. And you just do this. All right. Well, that's what you can do. I'm sure you could do something far more sophisticated than that if you wanted to. And then you grab a pair of paintbrush and just wet it. And I think it works really well because the uh, pencil has disrupted the protective surface on top of the paper. So it blends absolutely no problem whatsoever. This paper is the best friend of watercolour pencils, no doubt about it. This is Kuretake watercolour. And um, all I did here was I just literally put the paint on and worked it in a bit. And because I've already done one layer, um, it's um, going to um, go on much better the second time round. And uh, as long as you're willing to work it in a bit, 
come back and do a second layer. It works. It beads up a bit though. When you just go in and just, just do it like that without working it in, it beads up. So you have to scrub at it a bit and eventually it goes in. This one down here is gouache. This is Arteza gouache, which is a reasonably good gouache. And that went on much better than the plain watercolor and is going on again, absolutely fine. So, and look how bright it is. Now, this is the interesting thing because at that point I thought to myself, you know what? If I were to take a piece of tissue paper and wet it and then wash the paper, what would happen? So what I did was I just came to a fresh page and I literally put water on here, just water, and I gave it a good rub like this. You can hear that I'm rubbing it fairly hard. I wanted to make sure that it did the job. So it kind of got all the coating off the top. Then I dried it off. This is hilarious. It's something you can't possibly do with ordinary um, paper. But I just dry dried it off and you can feel at that point that it's gone a little bit, um, uh, what's the word, textured. It's, it's sort of bubbled up a little bit, but that's only temporary because as it dries, you get rid of it entirely. Okay. So now the top half is washed, and the bottom half isn't. And what happened was, I'm going to just draw a quick picture. Um, let's see. What happened? I'm going to draw a pot and some mother in law's tongue, like that. And I'm going to do the same down here on the bit that I didn't wash. Okay. Like that. And then I find my brush. And this bit where I haven't wa washed it, look what happens. You pick up the paint and you put it on and it beads like that, which gives an interesting look. You know, it's not completely obnoxious. It gives a kind of funky modern look. You could live with that, but it might not be what you want. Par contre, as they say in France, this bit here was washed. And look, did you see the difference? It just behaves exactly like watercolour paper should, but so very often doesn't. The paper is smooth, the paint goes on, it runs a little bit, not too much. Look at that. needed a bit more water there. So there's that and then we did the pot in quinacridone gold. So we just to see the difference. It's just night and day, right? So if you did want to experiment with this paper, which gives this amazing bright, vibrant colour, because it's so, it reflects everything back. It doesn't absorb the light. And then plus, of course, if you're using Kuretake paints, which dry true to what you've put on. And then, so this is, oh, I've made a mess here because I put that on top of that and that was all wet. But you know what? I might be able to just wash that off. Just a sec. You see, this is a good test because I don't know if this will work. They say it does. No, it's going to... It's going to wash the paint off as well. Yeah, so <laughs> there you go. If you want to correct your painting, you don't need to waste the paper. You can just, I think, can wash it all off. 
Oh my goodness. Whatever next. And then you can start again. Life is such an experience, isn't it? Such an interesting experience. So you could now paint that again. Um, where's my brush gone? I think we should be able to paint it again. Yep. I could see, I don't know if we're um, promoting this for children to use, but I can see that a product made from this would be absolutely fantastic for youngsters because they could just do it again until they get it right. Don't you think that's a really amazing possibility? So I just literally washed that off and I'm painting on it again and it's fine. It takes a little bit of a while to dry, but you can speed it up a bit with um, a hairdryer. It doesn't melt or anything. And those dots will go away as it dries. I know they will. So there we are. There we are. So that's Stone Paper Explored. I hope you found that interesting. And um, I think I'm going to get myself some sheets of it so that I can do proper paintings and, um, you know, don't need to do it in a book like this, but uh, some nice plain sheets. In fact, what I might do is dismantle this book and use the sheets of paper for painting on. So this is made by Etched and I'll put um, contact details and so on and so forth um, somewhere close to this video. I'm not quite sure where they'll go, but they'll be there. So I'll let you go now. Have fun trying this out and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye.